Hello fellow leggers, you are joining us on the cut at the Young Vic. Where we are seeing a controversial play, which is a previous Olivier nominee, Ooh. and that is Jesus Hopped the A-Train. So stick around to hear our thoughts. And find out how many stars, whether it's break a leg or, or leg it. it. Vic, love this space, a real vibrant theatre. Um, it's called the Young Vic and it has a young, vibrant spirit. The space is so adaptable, so I'm looking forward to see what they do with this one. Yeah, this play itself, Jesus Hot the A-Train, is written by Stephen Adley Gurgis and his other work includes The Last Days of Judas Iscariot and The Motherfucker with the Hat, which, which we, we saw loved. yeah at the National a few years ago and it was excellent. Some yep. really superb writing. This play premiered off-Broadway in two and even had a production over here in London at the Don Mar Warehouse in 2002 which was nominated for Olivier for Best New Play. Okay. Now it takes place in a prison on Rikers Island in New York as two men are held in custody facing murder charges. Sounds deep. It does. This production is directed by Kay Hewitt, has previous associate directing credits on shows such as Yerma, right here at the Young Vic. Brilliant production. And One Love, the Bob Marley musical, which we saw at the Birmingham Rep and we have a review for. It's just up there, guys. You can catch it just up there. Now, the cast includes Dervla Kerwin as Mary Jane. Dervla is well known for her TV work on Valley Kiss Angel and Goodnight Sweetheart, but she's an accomplished stage actress. We've Love seen her it. in a few shows. We've seen her in the Weir, which was great, and also Mr. Foot to the Leg, and she's yep. just always a joy to watch. Two hours, 15 minutes, including the intervals, are pretty snappy. Not nice. A, not a long one, but there is an interval, so we'll be catching you then to tell you what we think so far. And as usual, stick around to the end to hear all of our thoughts and find out how many stars. We've come to the interval, which means it is time for Break Leggers. 30, 30 second, second interval, interval breakdown. breakdown. What do you think start with you? Um, I'm really enjoying it. Um, some really strong characters, some really interesting writing, some really strong monologues. Um, it's moving at a really nice pace with some real um, good percussion as music, which is really zipping me up and waking me up. So far, so good. How about you? I would go so far as to say it's an incredible piece of theatre with some absolutely outstanding performances. I would be surprised if I don't nominate for a Legacy Awards in this one and I can't wait to find out what happens next. Well we've come to the end of Jesus Hopped the A-Train here at the Young Vic. Let's start with Leg and Nathan. I really enjoyed this. Um, I think the writing is great and I think the performances were fantastic. Great. In a nutshell. In a nutshell. That is a very small nutshell, isn't it? Do you that care is, to expand that on is any it. of those I points? I really enjoyed it. I think that this writer is just a really great writer. Yeah. The way he delivers his text, the kind of the pieces we've seen, he doesn't work with that many characters in both it's the pieces we've seen. not huge casts, are they? No, they're not many, but the interplay between them, the dialect, the discussions and the debates they're having are so well crafted and cram packed with drama um, that you're literally hinging on every single word. It's really intelligent and yet really current and fruity and dynamic and gritty um, in terms of its messages, touching on redemption, touching on religion, touching on beliefs, touching on good and evil yeah. and standing up for right and just just the, the characters at conflict. I think Great. that uh, what impressed me most about this piece is it asks the big questions. It asks those philosophical questions that, you know, people spend years debating, lifetimes in fact, such as what is morality and who makes a decision on what is right and wrong? Ultimately, who is the punisher? Who becomes the one that's in... That's, who is judge? Who's who is jury? Yeah, yeah, exactly that. And those philosophical questions are Taylor's oldest time, yet this piece explores it in such a modern and approachable and... Um, just a relatable context, and one that we can all uh, uh, totally, you know, <sighs> buy into and, and understand, but in a really clever way still, that let, means the questions aren't simple, they're, they're complicated yet accessible. Complicated yet accessible, really strong characters, um, really strong brokes of good and evil, who is really good, who is really evil, all, all those kind of questions. 
is Absolutely. anybody truly all he good? Good. Only good, holy good, only good, and holy, holy good. in the le literal sense of the word here. Because when people start acting like the messiahs, do you know what? We saw Tartuffe this weekend as well, right? And I, I sort of sensed a bit of the same sort of themes when somebody These big questions, the big questions, and also when somebody takes on the role of ultimate good and they say, "Listen to me, I am the one that knows these things, and it should, be, of course, I need to be in control of this situation because I am enlightened and I am the one that has the answers." And then how society can turn on that. Those themes are here as well. Thanks, Molly S. Yeah, Sixteen, whatever that was, to right now, two thousand. So the piece is really good. The piece is phenomenal, and I would go so far as to say is I would read this text I want to I want to read those monologues and I want to relive those moments already we've only just stepped out okay so you're working with a really good text but then we need to put the production together yes so what do we think of the way this production was put together sensational really simple really simple pretty much a bare stage you've got some moving elements of set but so minimal and it it really exposes the text and that you can do that with a strength the strength I of this text. It. It's I just love it. this is it, guys. You're in a theatre, but we're not going to rely on the bells and whistles of this production because you don't need it when you've got a really strong play. Really strong play and a really strong cast to deliver it. Just strip everything back yeah. to simple elements in terms of its staging, in terms of its confinement, because it's set in kind of the cells of a prison, yeah. pretty much. So you're only in small segments, and yet it works so well. Yes. So, um, set designer really Magda Willy, but yeah, great decision that me and made by the director there to keep it simple. And why yep. the hell bloody not? Um, while we're on production, I also really like the sound design. Peter Rice on sound thought that he did a great job. Do you know what I really liked about it? Is the sound was shocking and it was thrilling and it came in at the really it came in at the right moments and, and was an absolute jar to the system and it was loud. It was I really loved. loud. It was percussion, um, mainly a drum doing instrumentals, a certain beat. At times we had other instruments, almost jazzy with a saxophone, but it came in with a exact moment yeah. and literally I jumped out of my skin a few times, which really helped move the piece along. And as you said, it was loud. It was, it was as if the drum kit was right next to me. Yes. It was booming. Yeah, and I, I would see a lot of venues that seem to like the volume. They just turn it all down. I don't know, we're in a residential area. or well, maybe we should keep it quiet. But no, thrillers. I was thrilled by the sound. I like thrill, I like big and bold, and they go with sound, and when such things happen, I am moved, and as such, wow. I'm going to call it, What? Um, can I put in a nomination? And not a nomination, okay. for a Break a Legger's 2019 award? Break a Legger 2019 nomination for, I guess it would be best sound design possibly, for going to... Peter Rice for Jesus Hop the A-Train. Boom, there it is. You no said taking that it be, right um, now, is there? Nominations for this. Yeah. I don't know if it's supported. Are you, are you going along yeah, with that? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so, I'm okay. going to own it. We're, a, yes. you know, we're together on this one. Uh, okay. Let's so, also move on to some of the um, performances. Let's move on to some of the art actors here because um, this company is small, but my God, are they tight. Small but mighty. Small and mighty. They pack an absolute punch. Matthew Douglas in the role of Charlie D'Amico. He was sort of like the nice guy. He found, I mean, he didn't stay in his profession, unfortunately, because he was too nice to be a cop. Yeah. Too nice to be a prison warden. Almost two scenes, not, yeah. um, but really well um, performed. Yeah. Again, small but mighty. Compelling. Really balanced. Um, Joplin Sibtain as Valdez. I really liked his performance. He, he, he was he was almost really evil, but in a position of power. But he didn't play that, I'm evil, I'm gonna be mean. He, he just played the character and I really enjoyed that. It's the potential. I was on edge in the early scenes with him. I was thinking the potential of what could happen. I was like, oh, the, 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 I was tense. So, good job there. Must have done a good job to make you feel so tense. Um, Dervla Kerwin, oh, probably a name that you recognise if you're British and you've seen a lot of British TV, she pops up a lot. And she has gone to show again what a fantastic stage actress she is. She gets a lot of monologues and most of her stuff is actually delivered out to the audience. She gets these massive scenes. And that's a big ask because this isn't a piece with a narrator. 
but she is sort of the narrator. Yeah, and she heads out into the audience, just yeah. literally performing. And this, the way it's set, you've got audience on both sides. It's traverse, so, so. You're having to spin here, yeah. there, and everywhere. And, and she did have some nice meaty scenes as well with one of the other characters who we'll come on to. Yeah. So again, really well performed, really nice dynamics. Oberon K.A. Ajepong. Ajay Pong, he um, played Lucius Jenkins, and I thought that he was exquisite. Now, there, he has a lot of scenes with the guy playing Angel, who we'll move on to, and their chemistry and that dynamic was electrifying. Like, his performance, so compellingly, <laughs> just deep and unsettling and just oh god I wanted to eat that and it's magical because the, the text that they have to work with is so juicy and so good and they make it come alive they own that text and it's a real physical part as well yeah really for him There's and no holding back he was he was great really enjoyed Oberon good so let's um do you know what we'll do it then what are we doing if you're gonna do that I'm gonna do this I'm going to do a Break a Leggers Award nomination 2019. Another one, Another one for <laughs> Best Actor. Okay. For Oberon K.A. Ajipong in the role of Lucius Jenkins. There we go. I, I thought, Boom. He, you know what? He was great. He was great. We're setting ourselves up for quite a few because yeah. there was another who he was playing opposite, playing the role of Angel. Was was then? Yeah. So UK. <laughs> yeah, uh, sorry, Angel. I see where this is going. Played by Okwelly Roach. Now I, honestly, I've never. I, it's the best performance in a play that I have seen all year. I was hanging off every single word. So he, natural. He was the most honest to God, captivating. Uh, performer and believable and completely in that moment in that role the whole way through I could not get enough of him that guy could read the phone book to me and I would be impressed because his delivery style is exquisite I'm gonna do it again break a leg of 2019 nomination for best actor Okwelly Roach Angel Cruz from Jesus of the Age. Well, I am knocked out by the amount of nominations. Yeah. I, I, I second that. Yeah, he's got good. some fantastic monologues, some fantastic duologues. He made them come alive. It's that good, it guys. Chris. For his performance alone, it's it's worth seeing for me. I just thought he was mind-blowingly good. I Who knew an actor could be that bloody good? Like Young, fresh, dynamic. Just, oh, my God. Oh, my God. So I'm exhausted. Uh, I'm exhausted too. So let's sum it up. <laughs> well, I guess you're probably wondering how many stars we're gonna give Jesus of the A Train, which is currently playing here at the Young Vic. We are going to give five. The full shebang for this one, guys. You will be an idiot to miss out. Get your tickets now. It's running for the next month or so, so you've got time to get down here. Tickets aren't hugely expensive at the Young Vic. They managed to keep their prices low, low, low. You are going to have a fantastic two hours. If you love those TV sort of Netflix crime dramas and prison things, you, yeah. you know, even there's even there's a lot of humour in this piece as well. We didn't really touch on the humour. If no. you like Orange is the New Black and that sort of a show, you're going to love this. Like, I, I can't imagine, I was saying on the way out, I, I would be happy to send my work colleagues to this and know they'd have a great time even though they're not theatre goers. I would send... I would send the, just Preach. anyone that loves any <laughs> okay. TV, TV, drama, crimey thing. Get, it, just it's come. something it's you brilliant. say a fantastic time, because it's not a fantastic time show, but it's thought-provoking, yeah. it's great text, it's great performances. You're going to go away with a lot to away, think it, it, about. Discussion, yeah. yeah, a really thought-provoking piece on so many levels. Yeah. And just in the questions it's asking, like say the line of discussion. As a result, I'm going to do it again. What? Break a Leg of 2019 award nomination for best revival of a play. What the hell? Jesus on the A-Train, I'm doing it again, guys. I really love that piece this much and I really think you should come and see it. How many nominations is that? That's four nominations in for one piece. But Do you know what? When they're good, they're good they are people. Good. And let's make our pave our own future. We're making yes. our own way with our with our nominations and our awards so we shall own this yeah. I support this four nominations all okay. thoroughly deserved but you know what that's just what I think so thoroughly endorsed that's what he thinks that's what I think what do you think you're going to come and see this right and you're going to leave us a comment down below because we'd love to hear from you we're the Breaker Leggers <laughs> and we'll catch you again soon bye, bye.